Aloha and welcome to the sixth module of the Eyes of the Reef Network online training program. Thanks for being here and for taking the time to learn more about how you can help protect Hawaii's coral reefs. You have reached the sixth module of this course, which will provide you with an overview of marine invasive species and algal blooms. If you have any questions during or after this training, please reach out to your local island coordinator. Free training materials are available for you or your class, including underwater guides and training booklets. Please reach out to your local island coordinator to find your nearest pickup location. Contact information is available on our website at eorhawaii.org slash contact us. Marine invasive species are recognized globally as a major threat to coral reefs and are responsible for millions of dollars of damage to Hawaii's reefs and shorelines. In this module, you will learn how to recognize introduced and invasive algal species that have become established in Hawaii. You will also learn more about other types of invasive marine species and native species blooms. Unfortunately, many reefs around the world are facing a phase shift from mostly stony coral cover to mostly algal cover. Phase shifts can dramatically affect coral reef ecosystems, causing a complete change in biodiversity. Once established, certain types of algae can be difficult to get rid of and can cause negative ecosystem impacts, such as inhibiting coral regrowth and preventing the settlement of new larval corals. Two critical reef conditions can help maintain a healthy coral reef ecosystem. The first condition is a healthy grazer population. Grazing fish and invertebrate species such as parrotfish, surgeonfish, and urchins can help maintain coral populations by eating algae and keeping it under control. The second coral condition is good water quality with minimal pollutants, especially excess nutrients from fertilizers and cesspools. Algae thrive in poor water quality conditions, which can fertilize and enhance blooms. Where one or both of these conditions are compromised, algal blooms can flourish and overgrow coral reefs. Hawaiian reefs have experienced considerable damage from introduced algae over the last several decades. Alien invasive species or introduced species that arrived accidentally by ballast water or hull fouling of ocean-going ships or by accidental or intentional release. The most harmful of these invaders displace native reef species and take over ecosystems. Although there are probably hundreds of introduced marine species in Hawaii, only a few have demonstrated exceptionally dangerous invasive tendencies on reefs. More than 20 species of non-indigenous seaweeds have been introduced to the Hawaiian Islands since the 1950s. Some introductions were accidental, while others were intended for culinary use. Five of these introduced seaweeds have become established on reefs in Hawaii and pose a threat to coral reef health. Smothering seaweed was introduced to Kaneohe Bay in the 1970s for commercial cultivation and culinary use, and is now considered to be one of the most destructive invas invasive algal species in Hawaii. It can typically be found in calm, reef flat environments. This species attaches to rocks and corals, then forms large mats that can overgrow large reef areas, smothering and killing corals. Smothering seaweed is high, highly regenerative and has extremely high growth rates doubling in size in 15 to 30 days. Full-size plants can be up to two meters tall. To identify this species, look for shiny yellow-orange coloration, coarse finger-like branches with a firm texture, and variable growth forms, including gnarled branches with spines and large, intricately tangled, fleshy mats. Smothering seaweed can form thick mats across the top surface of live corals. Corals can only survive for a limited time in this state without intervention, which might include manual algal removal or grazer reintroductions to the area. 
Hookweed is an invasive algal species known for its severe degradation of beaches on Maui and Oahu. It's currently established on all Hawaiian islands except for Hawaii Island and Kaho'olawe. Hookweed was imported illegally from Florida for aquacultural use, but was abandoned due to difficulty in processing. Within four years, hookweed spread around Oahu and Maui, where it now forms large, stinky mats that regularly wash up on local beaches. Thousands of pounds of algae can wash up each week, and extensive cleanup efforts are required. Hookweed prefers calm, shallow reef flats or intertidal areas, but can also be found on highly wave exposed areas and on deeper reefs. It's most often found attached to other types of algae or floating in large mats. It has a light texture and breaks apart easily, allowing for rapid spread under the right conditions. Gorilla seaweed, also known as Gorilla Ogo, was first introduced to Oahu for aquacultural research in the 1970s. Since then, it has spread throughout much of Waikiki, where it washes up along beaches. Gorilla Ogo is also introduced on much of Molokai South Shore and along Hawaii Island's southeastern coastline. This species prefers shallow tide pools and reef flats down to 15 feet. Gorilla Ogo is extremely adaptable to varying water conditions, is quite brittle, and spreads easily by fragmentation. Gorilla Ogo can grow over the top of other benthic organisms, including native algae, corals, and invertebrates, and is particularly invasive on certain shallow reef habitats. To identify this algal species, look for varying color from bright yellow to orange or green, typically with dark brown color at the base, and cylindrical branches with bluntly rounded and often forked tips. Gorilla Ogo prefers shallow reefs and tide pools and forms dense clusters that can be dislodged during swell events. Once established, Gorilla Ogo easily overgrows other reef organisms, including corals. First reported in the 1980s, leather mudweed is a widespread tropical algae that was likely accidentally introduced on Oahu. Since its introduction, this invasive algae has spread all along Oahu's south shore, where it has disturbed and replaced other na native reef species, including endemic seagrass. It's also been found recently on reef areas of Kauai. Leather mudweed prefers calm reef environments from shallow subtidal areas down to 80 meters depth. The closely packed blades of leather mudweed trap and collect fine silt, adding a mud layer to invaded reef areas. This algae can form thick mats that provide muddy habitat for filter feeding invertebrates, such as worms, mollusks, and other types of algae. As leather mudweed becomes established, it completely changes the ecosystem around it. Prickly seaweed was accidentally introduced to Hawaii in the 1950s, and since then has become the most widespread alien algae in the state. It's currently found on all of the main Hawaiian islands. The species is highly adaptable and can survive in brackish fish ponds, tide pools, rocky intertidal benches, and on shallow reef flats. Fortunately, this algal species is a favorite of surgeon fish and is rapidly consumed and cleared in areas with healthy surgeon fish populations. The branches of prickly seaweed are easily fragmented, which has helped it establish a wide distribution. Where it grows, it can easily displace native species. To identify this species, look for red, brown, to yellow coloration, depending on the light level, spine-like brittle branches, an attachment to coral or reef substrates, or in free-floating masses. In stressed or disturbed environments, normally benign native algal species can sometimes grow out of control. 
The native cyanobacteria, or blue-green algae shown here, Leptolingvia crosbiana, normally appears as small cushions a few inches wide attached to rocks or along the tips of finger coral. In 2008, this algae aggressively bloomed along the reef slope at Honanao Bay on Hawaii Island, overgrowing large sections of smooth finger coral. This algae formed large, thick mats that suffocated all underlying material. The Hawaii Division of Aquatic Resources hand cleared a portion of this bloom, and eventually the bloom completely dissipated on its own in 2010. In December 2020, an Isa the Reef member reported a bloom of marine algae at Anini Reef on Kauai. The Hawaii Division of Aquatic Resources investigated and found a bloom of the native green algal species, Calerpa taxifolia. The cause of this bloom was not determined conclusively, but occurred following a heavy rain and runoff event that delivered sediment and excess nutrients to the area. The Hawaii Division of Aquatic Resources carefully removed the algae from the large smooth finger coral colony pictured here to prevent coral smothering. A follow-up survey in February 2021 found minimal regrowth of the algae on the coral, but some persistent algae in the area, which will continue to be monitored. Introduced invertebrate species can also become highly invasive on coral reefs under the right conditions. The upside down jellyfish was accidentally introduced to Oahu, most likely due to ships transporting larvae in ballast waters. This odd anemone-like jellyfish now occurs around the state in shallow or silty areas, including harbors and lagoons, intertidal flats, and around mangrove habitats. Upside down jellyfish prefer calm, shallow water and tend to lay on the sand mouth upwards gently pulsating to create water flow over their arms and tentacles. Like corals, the jellyfish have zooxanthellae in its arms, and the upside-down positioning exposes these photosynthetic cells to sunlight. These jellyfish can consume fish larvae and other native reef organisms and have an intense sting. Depending on a person's sensitivity to the toxin, a sting can result in skin welts, skin rashes, itching and vomiting. To identify this species, look for frilly, colorful tentacles, yellow, brown, green, or white overall coloration with pale spots and colorful streaks, and an anemone-like appearance, as the jellyfish usually lies upside down in the sand. Snowflake coral is an invasive species of octocoral that was first discovered in Pearl Harbor in 1966. This species has since spread to all of the main Hawaiian islands and is typically found in deep or shaded reef areas. Snowflake coral can grow very quickly in deep water, enabling it to smother competitors. In 2001 on Maui, researchers found that snowflake coral had overgrown or killed over 60% of the native black coral trees between 80 and 105 meters depth at their survey site. Snowflake coral reproduces year round and produces hundreds of eggs per polyp, which are widely dispersed by ocean, ocean currents. With only one predator in Hawaii, a small nudibranch, there are virtually no natural controls for this invasive invertebrate. Management intervention is required to regulate this species, which can be a challenge in deep water habitats. To identify this species, look for bright white polyps and branches, often covered with an orange encrusting sponge, and overgrowth of other stationary organisms, like black corals and shellfish. Rarely, you may observe an unusual or unknown invertebrate species that appears to be overgrowing coral or behaving invasively, like this unknown white tunicate on Hawaii Island. The presence of these unusual invasive blooms can sometimes be associated with water quality changes or other environmental stressors. Please be sure to report any significant cases you observe to the Eyes of the Reef Network. To learn more about marine invasive species, please visit the Eyes of the Reef website. We also recommend checking out the Hawaii Division of Aquatic Resources 
Aquatic Invasive Species webpage for more information on possible invasive species in your area. This concludes Module 6 of the Eyes of the Reef online training program. Mahalo for your participation. Next, you'll be required to successfully complete a short review quiz in order to move on to the next module. Okay, review question one. Invasive and introduced species are typically brought to an ecosystem by blank, and you can select all that apply here. A is hull fouling of ocean going ships. B is accidental release of aquaculture species, aquarium specimens or bait. C is intentional release of aquaculture species, aquarium specimens or bait. Or D, all of the above. You said D for all of the above, you're correct. Question two, what is the best way to recognize an invasive species or harmful bloom? A, look for algal species that are more abundant than other species on the reef. Everything should be equally abundant. Choice B, is be familiar with your local reef's native algae and watch for one, changes in algal cover, two, the presence of new algal species, and three, the overgrowth of other species by algae. C is report any unknown algal species to eyes of the reef, even if it's a small amount, or D, all of the above. If you said B, you're correct. Question three, native species can demonstrate aggressive blooms as a result of changes in water quality or other ecosystem stressors. A is true and B for false. If you said A for true, you are correct. Question four, native species can demonstrate aggressive blooms but will never disrupt other native species or ecosystem function. A is true and B for false. If you said B false, you are correct. Okay, last question. If you think you are observing an invasive species at your local reef, you can find more information and identification guides on the Eyes of the Reef website and the DLNR DAR Aquatic Invasive Species webpage. A for true and B for false. And if you said A for true, you are correct. How did you do on the quiz? If you missed more than a few questions, you may want to go back and review the materials in this module before moving on to the next module. Mahalo for your participation in the Eyes of the Reef online training program. In the next module, you will learn more about recognizing coral conditions on your local reef.